everybody, we're here with Rodrigo Cañedo, a candidate for District J. And I could tell you a little bit about his background, but I think it's better projected if we hear it from the man himself. So, Rodrigo, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Absolutely. Well, my parents uh, are both from Mexico, and uh, my mother was from Monterrey, and my father from uh, Tampico. Uh, they moved here um, back in uh, back in the seventies, uh, before I was born, and then they had me. Uh, I was born in Pasadena, and I uh, grew up for three years in the Gulf Gate area. Um, years that I can't remember, of course, uh, but I do remember coming out here for the first time to see uh, see our home. Uh, here and uh, after that, I grew up in uh, Sharpstown, right, right in the smack center of uh, District J. Awesome, and you're a fellow cougar, aren't you? I am a fellow <laughs> cougar, of course. Of course, I didn't get that far, but uh, yes, after I uh, graduated from Lee High School, uh, also in the district, I uh, went to the University of Houston and went to the school of uh, got my bachelor's in uh, business administration with a focus in finance, and uh, that was back in finished in '96, uh, so awesome. finished in four years. Awesome. And, and how do you think um, having this background that you do have, how do you think that's going to play a big role um, for your candidacy? How will that help you? Well, certainly having uh, you know a college degree uh, helps out, but more than that, uh, I think uh, having uh, applied that in business over the last 15 years and also uh, having a Having a, uh, a history of service to the community, I think that ever since I graduated, I've, I've been serving the community in many different ways. And when you combine those two, I think those, um, those show my passion for serving. And this new District J is a great opportunity to apply that passion to serving all the people of our, of our district. Definitely. So you would definitely consider, you know, growing up and um, having a lot to do already with District J before running for candidacy as a, an, an advantage? From your other candidates? Well, I think it's certainly necessary that one knows your area, uh, and I know my area. I've, I've been here since there used to be fireworks above the Sharpstown Mall, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. things were very different then, and um, and now things have changed. Uh, we've seen the uh, Sharpstown's getting sharper, <laughs> which uh, yeah. that was the 90s of Sharpstown Mall, and then I went to Sharpstown Middle School. I had friends all over the, the area. Uh, I've eaten, lived, uh, you know, had uh, doctors at Memorial uh, Herman Southwest, or back, uh, back when it was just called a, well, what was it before it was Memorial Herman Southwest? I forgot what it was called before, just Southwest Hospital? Yeah, probably Southwest, yeah. Yes, um, before the Herman part came in, anyway. And then, uh, you know, my first job was at Randall's at uh, Fonder and Bissonette, that uh, store has since closed down, and so I've definitely, I, one should know the area, and I can definitely say that I know the area. I used to, <laughs> I used to play Pee Wee, uh, Baseball on a uh, park at uh, Bernard Balin Park, and uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm very familiar with the area, and that is certainly something I think every candidate uh, should know his area well. In addition to that, uh, I'd like to also make sure that all of our constituencies are involved in the political process and in the civic process. Uh, we have a very international district. We have a Hispanic community. We have a huge Hispanic community. In fact, uh, this area, the District J, uh, as far as census figures goes, is 63% Latino, and so that. We need to make sure everyone's involved. We have a large Vietnamese community, Chinese community, we have uh, Nigerians, and of course we have our African Americans and our and our uh, Anglos. And so I wanted to reach out to everyone and make sure that everyone's feeling both served and also involved in the process. We have uh, local organizations that I want to make sure that they're part of the governance and of the oversight of those organizations. And I want to make sure and reach out. Uh, also, you know, I brought up the fact about uh, first-time homeowners. A lot of times what you'll find is language barriers. And so bridging those gaps and making sure that everyone feels that they're part of the neighborhood, that they can speak to their neighbors, or, uh, if at the very least through their civic organizations, uh, to make sure that everyone's on the same page, that we want to create a safer, better place to live and work and uh, make a District J uh, all the better. And if you do win the election, what do you plan to bring into District J? Well, you know... The, the one thing, it's a long-term process, you know, reducing crime and reducing the perception of crime. I think people have uh, come to know Southwest Houston, uh, which includes our area, uh, as, a t as a place where you wouldn't want to go. When I uh, when you put a Facebook uh, update that, oh, I just went to Sharpstown Mall uh, or Mount Plaza Medicas, uh, people will say, you know, what are you doing there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a, certainly a perception of crime, but, uh, you know, as... As the statistics have been put out, as far as when you normalize it for for our uh, census figures or how many people live in the area, uh, you realize that it's really not that bad of an area of crime. Um, you know, we we do have a lot of folks that are living pretty um, in a small, dense area, and have a lot of multifamily residences, and so that uh, might create a perception of crime where there where if you just said Southwest Houston. 
uh, may come up in the cli uh, crime blotter a lot, but uh, when you think of it uh, in terms of how many people live down here, I think it's not as, as dangerous as people would say. And in fact, I would say it's, you know, frankly, around here, it's, it's pretty safe. You know, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's a great and upcoming area. I think that uh, it's a gem of, of our area. You can't find the lot sizes that you can down here uh, in other parts of town. Uh, it's, we're close into the city and there's a lot of ab advantages. We have everything you need. We have hospitals, university, uh, we have great food in Chinatown and so, uh, you know, and, and all around, you know, actually we do kind of lack a, a number of sit-down restaurants. We have uh, a few um, and uh, what I've realized is we don't have a single movie theater in our area and so, you know, depending on what the needs are of the area, we, we can certainly look at uh, other developments that we could uh, look into and try and attract to our area. Definitely. So that's one area of, of crime, and then uh, you have neighbor, neighborhood protection. I think what you have a lot of is is um, a lack of enforcement and education as far as our, um, especially first-time homeowners. I, I walk the blocks a lot, and you see a lot of folks, say, parking on the, on the lawn, uh, not knowing uh, when to put the trash out, things like that. And these are... These are things where these are opportunities to reach out to first-time homeowners and folks maybe that have, that just um, either don't know or, or don't care and and sort of um, put some teeth into the neighborhood enforcement. Uh, I know that there's been some cuts in that department already, and it's a brand new department. So uh, it is important, especially in a zoning-free city, to be able to enforce the the deed restrictions that we do have in order to protect the the values of our homes. Definitely agree with all those very good proponents. And finally, what do you have to say, or what do you want to add to our viewers about the voting process and letting them know when exactly are the elections so they can get their voice heard? Well, November 8th is the election date, and right. so that is the day uh, to be out there uh, voting. Of course, uh, you know, actually, I've never early voted in my life. I like to be out there on the day of excitement. Uh, <laughs> Same here. And fun. so, you know, you get to see folks walking around, people handing things out uh, the day of, and I'll be out there, and also I'll also be out there for early voting. And uh, so there's the opportunity to early vote, uh, but November 8th is the big day, and the big day that people should be looking forward to, to get out there. Their and calendars. Exactly, November exactly. 8th. Yes, yes, either before or after work, after school, uh, on a break, uh, get out there and, and uh, let their voice be heard. Definitely. Thank you. It has been such a pleasure. It's my pleasure. And you gained one more supporter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so you heard it already. November 8th, mark your calendars and be sure to check the candidates and be sure to get out there and get your voice heard. Thank you. Thank you.